Hello and welcome to Burlington to College Presents. My name is Nate Taves. I'm a cinema studies and film production major. I'm going for a BA at Burlington College. Um, our idea for this show is to present to you, the viewers, uh, or the community at large rather, the uh, students at Burlington College and their uh, works that they do. Uh, with that in mind, our first and only guest for this episode is uh, Anthony Green. Hi, Anthony. How you doing? Fairly well. Yourself? Pretty good, thanks. That's good. Um, now, you are a um, screenwriting and... Um, animation. Animation major. Um, you and I started the same year. We went through cinema studies or intro cinema studies rather together and the script writing stuff. That's right. Um, so you are here today to talk about, or tonight, or whenever this is being viewed, um, to talk about your, your DVD uh, videos of The Invisible Connection. Yeah, the, um, that's right. So um, we have four videos from that, as I understand it. And um, your first one is um, called Caught Up in a Mirror. Would you care to tell us anything about that before we view it? Or? Um, yeah, Caught Up in... Uh, well, first of all, these, these um, pieces can be viewed as um, just moving paintings. You can watch them as art. Or some of them actually have specific... Um, uh, creative purposes and this particular one is a homage to Boston, Boston visionary artist Paul Lafle and uh, it explores some of his diagrams and some of my diagrams and the experience of infinity um, placing a mirror to a mirror and um, it's an original score. The, the all of them are original. Okay, and you did those, is that right? Yeah, I, I composed the experimental music to go along with the pieces. Um, the piece that is uh, on this particular one is called the Time Traveling Guitar. Um, it's uh, part of a screenplay I'm writing. Uh, my main character finds a guitar that can transport him between realms. But and that's the uh, the. Uh, graphic novel screenplays. Yeah, that yeah. Uh, film slash uh, supplemental graphic novel. Okay, and you'll come back at a later episode. To Absolutely, I'd love to talk about it. Great. Really excited about it. Great, and just so I know, these were done for which class? Do you remember? Um, Alan Nichols' uh, experimental cinema class. Okay. I. Uh, yeah. Out of curiosity, uh, what do you think of his teaching style? Good. That's amazing, really great. I really like his instruction. I agree, I had him for uh, films with Robert Altman. Yep. And uh, it's incredible. It's, it's just a really laid back environment and you're able to have the creative freedom you, you need to do whatever you want. It doesn't censor anything or tell you what to do, it's wonderful. And for me, with a learning disability, like I, you know, uh, I just feel so much better. At, you know, Absolutely hand in the papers when I get them done as opposed to like every Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'd like to add that this is Caught Up in a Mirror 1. Um, okay. yeah. The last one that we'll see is called Caught Up in a Mirror 2. So um, that's number four for those who are keeping track. Yeah, basically it's, it's tr I'm trying to illustrate the, the experience of time travel. Um, that's pretty much it. Okay, it's pretty funky, so we'll take All a look right. at that. Uh, and where do we look for this? I think your latest TV screen here? Yeah, <laughs> where do we look for this? I think we look at the screen there.
<laughs> Take a breath. I, I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> uh, I really don't. That was arguably the trippiest thing I have seen <laughs> to date. Well, that's one of the adjectives I get. Uh, can you use some others that we may not get kicked off air with? Um, well, basically that piece is, um, I, I'm writing a, an essay on time travel right now, and um, more so caught up in Amir too is, is basically my interpretation of the experience of time travel. Um, that's the... Uh, <clears throat> that's, that's the, the second, last one, the though. fourth one. Yeah. yeah, the fourth one. We'll see. Um, it a lot of times um, time travel theories involve multiple realities, multiple histories, and to me it, that really explains a lot um, as to our experience. Um, it also explains memory. There's a theory that goes um, we're able to remember things because in a parallel universe there's a part of us at that point in time. And so we remember, we're experiencing, we're going back to that, that person and the same for ourself in the future. Is, um, there are infinite, an, an infinite amount of yous within these realms and you can kind of go back and forth with the uh, device known as the mind. I mind. <laughs> Now, I've been through uh, psychoanalysis to some extent in my life, and believe me, it was needed. But <laughs> and I haven't gone some time, but I'm seriously beginning to think about taking it up again after, <laughs> after viewing this. Yeah, uh, well, my best futurist opinion is that in the year 2008, most of us are becoming aware that the world in which we used to live in isn't, isn't a really the way we thought it was anymore, and the world that we are in, it, it isn't that way anymore. Yeah. Things are changing, and... Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, There's actually a professor building a time machine, or uh, trying to build a time machine right now, so, yeah. <laughs> Fan of Jules Verne, no doubt. Definitely. <laughs> um, I, you know, it's funny, um, you just saying that uh, times are changing and whatnot. Um, there's a House MD episode, remember that show? I, I don't watch TV well, usually, but I've yeah, heard, of heard, it, of it, heard of it. Least, yeah. There's an episode, and I forget which, which season it is, I want to say it's one or two, but uh, House says to Foreman, who was one of his underlings, um, it, there will never be a black president. They call uh, it a White House for a reason. Yeah. Now that statement has to have a retraction issue, as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely, yep. And now we've got Barack Obama in there. Yeah, never say never. Right, never say never, and it ain't over till the horizontally challenged lady sings, I guess. <laughs> Let's keep well it politically put. correct, huh? Yep. Uh, so, on your video here, the uh, Caught Up in a Mirror 1, uh, you did a lot of quick moving uh, light colored images, yeah. which quickly turn into dark images and back again. Is there a reason for that? Um, and if so, what is it? Yeah. Um, Just getting a lot drunk. I, well, I think what that's relating to is my kind of like my story, my screenplay involves the uh, the incorporation of a four realm um, diagram, which waking experience is experienced like we experience it now in color, and then the dream experience is kind of a little different as far as that's things might seem some things black and white, some things color. And the collective unconscious, I believe, is like a heightened experience, like um, like lucid dreaming, where everything seems more real than what we experience it here. And the fourth realm is just a great mystery that we really can't experience. Um, uh, but I think that's what I'm getting at in this piece, is the fact that things change very frenetically. and. So it's very much like your script in the sense that it starts off in the waking realm, as you call yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, which is like what we're doing now, what the viewers are right. watching with us, and then it goes to the dream realm, which is like sleep and psychiatrists, yeah. psychologists, whatever you want, yeah. so forth and so on, say that uh, that's usually viewed in black and white, mm -hmm. uh, although we can somehow say, yes, we see color when Absolutely. we dream. Uh, and then it 
kind of goes back to that waking realm thing again. Well, the uh, collective or, unconscious, which is a uh, very... Is that the next stage down from dream world? It's next stage up, yeah. Oh, next stage It's the third realm. Oh, okay. So, and then I think that you said there was a fourth realm, wasn't there? Yeah, there's a fourth realm. I, I call it the timeless go-between, which is the title of my story is Nine Long Nights of the Timeless Go-Between. Um, it's a... It's the conduit in which um, all things are able to be experienced. It's like the envelope that holds everything. If you look at the word OM, A-U-M, it also, OM is a four-part thing. It has the silence around involved. It's not just A-U-M, so it's, it's kind so of it's like... So it's not just the word, it's also what's around the exactly. word. Exactly. Uh -huh. I'm not a psychology major by any means, so what you just said, there goes the brain. Well, uh, <laughs> take what you can. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to play with that in a minute, but uh, I'll play with it while you answer this next question. Okay. Um, what made you think of all those images, the images we just saw? They, those were insane, sir. Uh, yeah, well, they involve a lot of sacred geometry, and the particular paintings that I filmed or posters of paintings that I filmed were um, dimensionality, the man manifestation of fate, which basically goes through um, a lot of, catalogs a lot of information in, a, in an epistemic ladder, and it shows uh, the correlations between music and art and philosophy and physics and math um, and even spirituality. Um, and the second one is, uh, the Thanaton III, which is Paul's uh, psychotronic painting, which involves putting your hands on the painting and staring into the eye and not blinking and thinking for an hour. Um, and you become aware of information somehow. It's, it's, a, it's psychotronic. It's mind, matter, linking. That's what it does. Um, basically, like kind of like the technology behind mandalas is they're not just pieces of art, they're actually devices to, to propel your consciousness. Okay, not to get hung up on a point here, but you said not blinking for an hour. Right. How do you do, is that it, like a clockwork well, or? If, if you talk to some people and you ask them, how do you achieve enlightenment? And some, some people will just tell you it's a matter of how still you keep your eyes. If you can keep your eyes completely 100% still, you're you have some really wonderful focus and you're... Oh, I'll never make it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, and that goes into the second one that we're gonna see, um, River Kateria, and that's, that's, that's kind of like a device. Like I said, it has a specific um, uh, ability to interact with you. Okay, well, before we get to River, yep, because uh, I have a couple more here. Um, y how did you create those? Uh, images. Um, I like to use as little effects as possible, but obviously you need to create the experience in the way you have to. So I, I um, basically used a, just a lot of frenetic film, move, like moving the camera really fast, and in post I had to enhance the colors um, just to get the particular look I wanted. And a post for those who don't know it is the editing process. Right. Um, um, basically, yeah, that's that's what I did. I enhanced color. I shot in camera uh, mirror effect as much as I could, and that's and, that. and that face that we saw at the end there, yeah, that's yours, right? That's actually um, an, the same image played forward and backward, and you see um, the exact same length, but it's played forward and backward, and it's and it's kind of like. Um, the eye opens almost before you see it, so it's it's really an interesting image, and a lot of people actually are terrified by that image. I'm not sure why. It actually, to me, it's it's a really peaceful image, just of myself. I don't know. It, it's it's a mirrored image. It's uh, so it has some sort of hypersymmetry to it, but I find it very comforting. I don't know why, but I would guess it's probably because you're. Uh, you know, you're the one that created it, and it, it, there's some sort of calming effect to, uh, 
some psychological comedy effect for you for that, but I, I can't speak for everybody else that has seen yeah. this now, but yeah. uh, <laughs> at least for me, yeah. th I find that unsettling because it's almost like, oh my God, so you know, somebody, oh my goodness, we don't yeah. want to kiss anybody else. Yeah. Uh, some, <laughs> uh, somebody's looking at me. Right. That's th and I can't look back at them. That's absolutely the, re the feeling you're supposed to get from it is, you know, there's someone peering into my soul and essentially we're all one being, so better get used to it. <laughs> I, I, I think I read somewhere, and I wish I could remember where, because I love to cite sources, as you can tell. Yeah. Um, but I read somewhere that I think there's a certain tribe, or at least I, that's where I read it, was a certain tribe of Native Americans, or maybe Native Americans in general. I don't like doing generalizations, so I'd rather I have to look that up now. But I think there was something about that, uh, that they didn't like cameras or something, because yeah. it, like takes away part of your soul or something like that? Right, well there's also uh, a lot of Amish people believe the same thing. Um, I really don't know much about that subject, but I think it's a good point. Something to research. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do so right after the show. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> maybe on the next one that you come back for, we could talk about that same point. I would, I'll definitely talk about it. Great. Um, so, uh, River, I, you want to? River Katerion is the Katerion. word. Katerion. It's a, just a made up word. Um, no wonder I keep tripping on it. <laughs> just, just uh, it's kind of like a device, um, like a consciousness altering device. Um, it, the word refers to river, um, kind of like think of the river of time. Instead of time being an arrow, it's more like a river that flows around objects. And um, Katerion, uh, the cat in that, is from the word vacate, which, um, you know, that's partially due to the fact that this is all vacation footage, which is really funny, that I filmed in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, which is the state I'm from. Um, oh, you're from Michigan? Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Um, I've got friends at St. Mike's from Michigan. Great. Um, let's see. And then uh, the A-T-E-R part is from water. It's, it's all about water and water having kind of like a consciousness to it. And ion. Ion? Uh, yeah, when you experience negative, negative ions are what are conducive to healthy human um, environment. Um, if you're sure. naturally occurring in, in uh, nature around the, um, the stream or um, certain candles get off negative ions, um, like especially honey candles, as opposed to um, sweet. paraffin based carcinogenic candles. But anyway. <laughs> okay, so. Um Let's take a look at this, and then I'll ask you some questions All right, about that. We can talk about it afterwards. All right, I think again with the TV screen. Right? All right. Yeah.
All right. So now I, uh, we, while we were watching that, um, the first thing that hit me is there's so much water in there. <laughs> you have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry about that. It's no, no, it's. Uh, it's a, uh, <laughs> my mind works in jokes, and <laughs> it's hard great. for me to be serious. <laughs> Got to have a sense of humor in these days. Especially. Otherwise, you won't come out alive. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, well, I'd just like to say that the, the correct viewing distance for that piece is, depending on how large your screen is, it's two inches. But the idea is to come on a normal like uh, monitor, you want to come so close that you, you can only see it. Ideally, it would be like wrapped around your head. But um, you, you I think come. they've got that technology yeah. now. Um, but you, you come so close to it, and you, your eyes go soft focus. and you become aware, uh, if, if you can pull it off correctly with extreme focus, not think or blink during the entire time. I mean, you have to be, uh, you have to study meditation or to really pull it off. I've only been able to pull it off once. Um, and you're the one that made this. <laughs> yeah, and if you do it accurately and you don't think or blink for the entire time of, while watching it and your eyes are soft focused and you're completely wrapped around the visual experience and the audio experience, um, you become aware that uh, reality is undular and you can almost, in a sense, kind of enter into this piece. And um, I don't know, they've, the Hindu Vedas have been trying to tell us that separation is an illusion and that reality isn't so concrete. So I think that's kind of what I'm getting at. Mm. Okay, to kind of eliminate some of these questions here uh, that I had, you filmed a uh, fish from like almost a window th that was built like right into a river essentially yep. or some body of water where there's fish. Yep, that and a glass bottom boat. Okay. And then essentially. Oh, okay. And then the docks you got from the back of a boat you filmed yep. off of. Yep. Um the waterfall going up before you say how that was done, let me tell you. I went back and I watched the wrong man. I was given a copy of this DVD before today's show so I could kind of write up these questions. And, okay. Uh, when I saw this, it freaked me out. And when I watched the wrong man shortly after, I got even more creeped out because Hitchcock has this thing where the windmill goes in the wrong, wrong direction. direction. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Did, was that your inspiration or was that inadvertent? I mean, yeah, sort of. I mean, not really, but, you know, it's all relative. It's uh, it's a beautiful image, beautiful idea. So I'd, when I was uh, actually on vacation, I was just seeing these waterfalls and these fish, and I think I was just thinking, someday, I don't know, it was weird. I was thinking, someday I'm going to make an experimental film where these uh, waterfalls are glowing neon, and they're traveling in reverse, and these fish and ducks are swimming backwards. I don't know about. Black. I don't know. It's just if it's just me or there's something incredibly satisfying about seeing fish swim backwards and ducks swim backwards and yeah, waterfalls they go almost never do it. backwards. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah I, I think I made this remark while we were watching it um, that uh, I was relaxed by watching the fish. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And I made the joke that. Uh, I guess that's because of the Polish blood in me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, my dad's family, I'm not going to go too deep into this, but my dad's family uh, used to have a boatyard um, called the Taves Boatyard okay. in um, Cape Cod, Provincetown. Yep. And uh, I, I only ever saw it once, and it was after the family didn't have it anymore. But it used to be owned by my dad's dad. Uh, his uncle and his other uncle. And then there was a series of mishaps and they lost it, essentially. But uh, I guess part of that stems from that, although it's funny because I cannot stand to be on boats and I mm. cannot stand mm. to go fishing anymore, but I yeah. still have that love of seeing fish. Yeah, it kind of draws the line between repulsing you and comforting you. It's kind of like this weird uh, instant in between the two. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so the... Huh. On to the next one? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Uh, our, our third video 
is um, through a through a glass, glass darkly. Darkly, yeah, through a glass darkly. And um, is there any intro you want to do for this? Uh, basically, it's just a. It was just one of the assignments, and I really needed to get a grade. We did a in-class project where we all made the soundtrack together, and then we had to create a film to it. And the power went out. Um, at the time, the power went out, which it always happened at this particular apartment, but my partner and I were just sitting around. We lit a bunch of candles, and she was reading Thoreau out loud. Um, and she couldn't, she was completely <laughs> baffled at, by the fact that I was using uh, technology at a time like that. Like, this is the perfect time to not use technology. We're always so immersed in it. And I was over filming things, filming the tea wear and stuff like that. It's just, hey, I need to get a grade, you know? And, um, so you just went to hell with that and the grade? <laughs> I, I just was uh, uh, really uh, focused in on the, um, the beauty of the images in candlelight and natural light, which I believe is one of our assignments. Um, so it kind of worked out really well. Okay, I meant to ask you before, uh, how is your partner doing? Well, she's uh, singing opera still, okay. doing very well at it. Are we at liberty to use her name, or would you rather? Yeah, Jane Snyder. Yeah. Okay, Jane Snyder. Um, yeah, she's also a Burlington College student on and off, right? Yep. Yeah. She's a poet, um, multi-talented, but that's uh, for another episode, I guess. <laughs> yeah, Yeah. well, maybe we can try to get her. Absolutely, uh, that'd be great. She'd yeah. probably be into it. Okay, well, you know, talk to her, say what she thinks, and if she Super. has any questions, you can contact me or Alan Nichols, and we'll go from there. And with that, let's take a look at this uh, Through a Glass Darkly again with the TV.
So that was a that was an incredibly shot thing. As you said, it was done in your apartment during mm -hmm. a power failure. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a great joke there, but I can't use it. <laughs> uh, <sighs> yeah, it was the uh, use of technology when I probably should have just sat in the dark and experienced the wonderful uh, silence of yeah, all. Yeah, absolutely. But there it is. Yeah, and the music you helped compose? Yeah, not really. I mean, I recorded it in uh, my class. Um, played this track and I wasn't a huge fan of it. It was just us drumming and making noise and sound. It was it was great. But I reversed it just I don't know. Just to make it fit the image better. Mess with it with that's all. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was fun. Yeah. Uh, now all of these so far and I believe the last one as well, you said that you did some sort of work on the music on. Hmm. And uh, and some of these you actually composed the music for, is that right? And how long did it take you to edit that piece that we just oh, saw? I'd say a couple of days of a couple of four hour. Four hour sense uh, about eight hours? About probably. Maybe a little longer, but probably around there. Okay. You're lucky when I'm editing stuff it takes me six years. <laughs> <laughs> That's a exaggeration, but that's the beauty of s experimental cinema. Uh, that's true. That's true. Um, so I, I didn't really have too much for that. I mean, it was just very well done. It is what is it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is exactly. Um, yeah. uh, it speaks for itself. <laughs> we can move on to the next one if you yeah, like. So, yeah. So uh, the next one is the fourth and last one on the disc. It's called "Caught Up in a Mirror 2, So it's a sequel or part two to. Mm -hmm. The first one that we saw. Yeah. Um, anything else we need to know about this, or should we? Just um, yeah, it's just uh, like I said, the experience. M what I would think the experience of time travel might be like. Um, it shows different images of uh, a matrix is of the same image displayed over the screen, and kind of trying to illustrate multiple histories. Um, um, and there's a little bit of my art in there. Um, one of the first shots after the one where I'm kind of caught in the mirror. The first shot is me being caught in a mirror. Um, and that was done in camera, all of that. And just kind of get the idea that I'm trapped in this mirror. And, and then bam, it switches into where you're caught in the experience. And uh, kind of used one of my illustrations as uh, going into this experience going into the underworld, so to speak. Which I liked in your uh, script and what I saw of your graphic novel there. Right. Um, okay, so let's take a look at our local TV screen again and take a look at this thing.
the that was the fourth one caught up in a mirror too. Yep. Um, you, now I saw that in the editing stages. Do you remember that? Like you were yep. editing it. I think it was like six or seven at night, one of the nights, and I walked by and said, hey, "What are you doing?" We had like a twenty-minute conversation mm -hmm. over the piece while you're editing. Probably did from that. Mm -hmm. That I think I and I hate to say favorites, but I think that was one of my favorites I've seen. Okay. Yeah. Um, the other one being the fish one. Yeah. Uh, don't want to call it the fish one. River Caterian. Right, the um, river one. Uh, so, uh, I really don't know what to say on this one. Uh, it was well done. Uh, I'm curious, I know you reused footage mm -hmm. uh, from the first mm -hmm. one. Uh, what else did you do that helped make it? <clears throat> um, well, I shot uh, a few images and created a matrix over the screen. And like I said, if you notice, it's really subtle, but somehow an, a, an underlying image emerges out of the matrix. So you're experiencing one image here, the exact same image here, the exact same image here in a grid. But if you watch it, when it's sped up really fast, you'll see that some sort of information is, is being um, disseminated in an organized fashion from different points, and you can almost see an, an underlying image that's emergent from the matrix of identical imagery. And there are a lot of um, things that I think I'm leaning towards. Um, if you Time is infinite to me. Um, you, you can't really break it down. You, you can go down and measure the smallest possible unit of time you can, but it, if you could conceive of it, of it, you could keep going and going and going, and that's kind of where I'm going when I zoom in on the tip of a candle flame. Just keep going and going and going, and without it degrading like a vector image uh, based on Mandelbrot algorithms. You can just keep going and going and going, and that's that's kind of what I'm getting at with this, as far as uh, the infinity of time. So in other words, time keeps on going no matter what happens. Absolutely. It's infinite. So I guess that kind of goes against what I've been hearing all these years about the world's coming to an end. Well, the world may come to an end, but time will still go. I mean... But if we're the ones that make time, how does that work? Um, well, basically, we experience what what we know of time isn't actually carved in stone as the way it is. It's just we just the way we describe it with equations is in like the form of wave functions is just a way that we can understand it. It's not carved in stone that the as saying these are the physical laws of our universe. Um, and I think time is the most mysterious one uh, to tackle really topic to tackle. That's fair enough. Um, I don't know yeah. if that answers it, but I'm <laughs> trying to... No, that, that's as diplomatic an answer as I've ever heard. Yeah. Uh, I, I really don't have any answer for that myself, so that, you know, that should surprise. Yeah. One of the images is a, I'm trying to illustrate is kind of like a curved black hole, which is the only black hole really that, I think mathematically, that we can travel through. And when you travel through it, you um, enter into an alternate universe. And if you hit it at the right angle, you're not completely destroyed by the gravity. And uh, they uh, just might discover um, CERN, the Hydron Collider in Geneva, might discover uh, Kerr black holes on a miniature scale, which is pretty interesting. Uh, uh. Well, uh, if you hear anything about that, please let me know. <laughs> well, they evaporate and they'll um, release certain waves, um, but it won't be a, a super threat. So yeah, until they for that. and then they'll hopefully learn how to harness them, and then we'll be on our way to time traveling. Yeah, um, th and that was another point that you had said while we were watching that um, that there was uh, you tried to create an image for a time travel, and that was that um, kind of 
tunnel-esque yeah, that's, thing with the that's light at the end. Of it. My favorite image, I think, of all of the pieces I've created. I think it it describes to me what a visual experience of traveling through time might be. It's it's one of the most subtle and I think poignant, beautiful images I was able to come up with. Um, there are hundreds of images within that little uh, split second montage. It kind of reminds me of dying, the tunnel, um, going towards the, the tunnel of light or whatever. Um, or there's the Bugs Life joke there. Don't go towards the light, I can't help it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's, that's one of the successful illustrations. Yeah, I would put that right up there with the Back to the Future, uh, myself, for the way they show time travel. Okay. Uh, I don't recall the specific montage they used, but... They didn't really use much of a montage, it was just kind of like a... The car disappearing and all that. Yeah, yeah, and then they show up in the other place. Um, and then like some sort of whirling thing when they occasionally went oh, inside yeah. the car. The void. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, clearly I think that is the best non-car related. Um, yeah, well, I think what that also somehow I intuited was the experience of my main character in my graphic novel slash film. Ex when he's uh, captured by the antagonist, he ha has to experience three pills. The first pill is love, the second pill is uh, fear, the third pill is everything in between. And er, everything, at, everything one, at once, more specifically. Um, and in the experience, um, he experiences his entire life at once, but not only that, the entire time of the universe at once. And it's, it was designed to kill him, but it just made him stronger. And that's kind of what I'm illustrating is the initiation of everything at once as it comes. That would be uh, everything at once in slow motion to the infinite power, you know, because everything at once is just everything at once. It's an instant, a still point in time, and you can't really experience much at that um, rate without time traveling. Um, but that's kind of what I'm trying to illustrate. Okay. Um, now, I, I don't know if we can show this or not, uh, but I'll ask the question. Uh, the DVD menu on that yep. DVD um, is one of your drawings from your graphic novels era. Yeah, yep. Um, aside from all the, the um, windows, which link you to the actual pieces. Um, yeah, that's kind of DVD. Take right? those away and you have the, the image. Um, which in that particular rendering, I believe, is um, unfinished. It's called uh, The Figure in the Mist, The Initiation into the Underworld. Okay. And that's kind of... Uh, if I recall, at that stage, you were pretty close to finishing that image anyhow. It's finished now. Yeah. It, yeah. it just has the figure in the mist, the spirit, in this kind of like a, so to speak, a quaking bog of fog and... <coughs> but it enters, you enter through a portal, the, which is the, the painting around the, the borders around, the three borders around, indicating you're in the third realm, the collective unconscious. Okay. Well, we'll have to have you come back to, um, to do that. Um, Great. And talk to us more about your graphic novel. Uh, we'll have to do another one with you and your script. And uh, apparently you and your music we have to do That'd be great. For. Yeah. So we'll try to set up for another three at some point. Um, thank you for coming by, All sir. Right. And um, I guess with that, um, I should say that this has been Burlington College Presents. Uh, thank you, Anthony Green, once again for coming by. My pleasure. And um, that's it for now. We'll see you next reel.